Our good old solar system is not short of celestial bodies to observe, analyze, and probe. We have one star, five dwarf planets, eight planets, 146 moons, 3,800 comets, and about 1.3 million asteroids. But to the inquisitive mind of Earthling astronomers and researchers, this vast array of rocks, balls of gas, and specks of ice we start to feel kind of boring. Let's admit it, after you spend so much time in the company of the same old lodgers, you start to feel the need to interact with some new people. An unexpected visitor that may bring along an aura of mystery or a fresh perspective on the secrets of the universe. The astronomy community has long theorized the existence of objects who may have drifted into view from outside the boundaries of our solar system. This theory finally became a confirmed fact in October of 2017 when a peculiar vagabond came into the sights of a Hawaiian telescope. This was Oumuamua, the first confirmed object from another star to visit our solar system. Was it your run-of-the-mill asteroid or comet, perhaps a remnant of a dead planet, or even more intriguingly, the forgotten relic of an advanced civilization? I mean, maybe, probably not. <laughs> On October the 19th, 2017, the University of Hawaii's Pan-STARRS-1 telescope was casting an all-encompassing gaze towards the space surrounding our planet. This telescope is funded by NASA's Near Earth Object Observations Program, or NEO, aimed at identifying and tracking asteroids and comets approaching the Earth. On that date, the Pan-STARRS observers spotted a new object some 33 million kilometers away, which they labeled 1I2017U1. What really struck the observers was the blistering speed at which their new friend was cruising through the solar system. Normally objects originating within the solar system tend to fly at an average speed of about 69,500 kilometers an hour, but this one was whizzing through space at more than 314,000 kilometers an hour. For context, this object could have covered the distance from Los Angeles to London in a well, hundred seconds. Was it a comet? Was it an asteroid? The object did not display any sign of cometary activity, such as leaving behind a trail of gas and dust so it must have been an asteroid. But hold on a sec. This so-called asteroid appeared to be accelerating slightly, which is what comets do. As we shall see, the nature of the object would remain subject of debate for years. But what appeared clear to the observers in Hawaii is that they had just spotted an ISO, an interstellar object, a vagabond who had reached our good old solar system from another faraway star. This was a huge deal, for 1I2017U1 was, according to NASA, the first confirmed object from another star to visit our solar system. And we should Stress confirmed there, as astronomers estimate that ISOs fly through our system about once a year. But these objects are relatively small and thus almost impossible to spot. That is, until Pan Stars 1 came along. 1I2017U1 could be thus considered a messenger carrying with it precious information on the makeup of remote celestial bodies. And that is why the Hawaii observers decided to give it a catchier nickname, Oumuamua, which is Hawaiian for a messenger from afar arriving first. Following the first sighting, the messenger was closely scrutinized by other observatories, such as the Very Large Telescope managed by the European Southern Observatory, or ESO, and located in Chile. The ESO's Very Large Telescope, and yes, that is its real name, measured the object's orbit and brightness and fed their images to a team led by astronomer Karen Meech at the Institute for Astronomy in Hawaii. They found that Oumuamua varied in brightness by a factor of 10, approximately every 7 hours. This suggested that the object was spinning, or rather tumbling around its longer axis. This led Meech to deduce that Oumuamua could boast a rather peculiar shape. Quoting, This unusually big variation in brightness means that the object is highly elongated, about 10 times as long as it is wide, with a complex convoluted shape. And so let's talk a bit more about that shape. Asteroids, meteors, and comets originating in our system tend to look like big chunky boulders. In other words, their aspect ratio is such that their width is not too dissimilar to their length. But Oumuamua appeared as a big, rocky, flying cigar, with a length estimated between 100 and 1,000 meters and a maximum width of 35 meters. In other words, you could fit up to 10 football fields along Oumuamua's length. When it comes to its width, you could barely fit two bowling lanes. ESO's images also provided clues on the color and composition of the object. Quoting again from Meech, We also found that it had a reddish color, similar to objects in the outer solar system, and confirmed that it is completely inert, without the faintest hint of dust around it. This suggested that the messenger was a rather dense object, completely dry, composed of rock and metals. However, its surface may have been reddened by millions of years' worth of exposure to cosmic rays. 
Based on the latter observation, the team in Hawaii posited that Oumuamua had been wandering freely across the Milky Way for possibly hundreds of millions of years before chancing upon our star system. Oumuamua clearly had places to be. Indifferent to our inquisitive looks, the object continued to fly across its trajectory, followed by yet more telescopes such as NASA's Hubble and Spitzer. It passed Mars's orbit on November 1, 2017, and then Jupiter's in May of 2018. By January 2019, it cleared Saturn before leaving our solar system and heading towards the constellation Pegasus. Based on such a trajectory, the teams in Hawaii and NASA observers speculated that Oumuamua may have come from the approximate direction of the star Vega in the constellation Lyra. But this fact is impossible to prove. We don't know exactly when Oumuamua first started its journey, nor when it may have possibly whizzed through Lyra before popping in to say hi. Its trek through the stars may have started hundreds, if not thousands, millions of years ago, when the observable constellations were in a different position. To recap, shortly after Oumuamua was spotted, astronomers had a fairly good model of what it looked like, a vague inkling of where it was headed, but absolutely no idea where it came from or what exactly it was. And that led to a lively debate with some rather interesting hypotheses. Initially, astronomers split into two teams, Team Comet versus Team Asteroid. Let's clarify first the basic differences between a comet and an asteroid, shall we? An asteroid is a rocky object smaller than a planet which usually orbits the sun. Comets are made of ice and dust. When a comet approaches the sun, it heats up and releases gases and dust, a process known as outgassing. The spewing of such materials leaves behind a comma or tail. The change in speed observed in Oumuamua was compatible with comet-like behavior. Comets have a highly elliptical orbit and when they get closer to the sun, tend to accelerate greatly. Problem number one. Oumuamua was observed to accelerate even when moving away from the sun. The outgassing process may impart an acceleration on an ISO, almost like a propulsion system. Problem number two, the object did not appear to have a comma or a tail, so it did not spew out gas. Oumuamua may have looked like a cigar, but surely it didn't leave behind a trail of smoke dust gas. Astrophysicist Roman Rafikov, University of Cambridge, proposed an alternative theory published in Quantum Magazine in October 2018. Rafikov ruled out that Oumuamua was a comet. An object of such particular shape, if made of ice and dust, would have been broken apart by its speed and acceleration. Then he excluded that it could be an asteroid, again due to its highly unusual shape. Rafikov's hypothesis is much more spectacular and perhaps terrifying. His scenario begins with a dying star, one that has exhausted almost all of its nuclear fuel. As the celestial body is slowly snuffed out, it leaves behind a much smaller but immensely dense core. This core remnant becomes what is known as a white dwarf, capable of exerting an enormous gravitational pull. And this pull is so strong that it can shred and rip apart asteroids, moons, and even planets. These bodies may break into large sections, which then collide with each other, fragmenting into smaller shards. According to Rafikov, Oumuamua is one of those shards. Basically, it's a messenger from a dead star. As an aside, researchers at the University of Warwick predict that this shall be the fate of our solar system, after the sun will eventually turn into a white dwarf and do that to us. So some cosmic horror right there for you. A distant, dying world being ripped apart by a dead star. But what if that world were inhabited? And what if it were able to dispatch one last message into the void of the cosmos? Alternatively, what if that world was doing just fine and dandy, but thought it would be cool to send a vessel toward a distant galaxy, toward a distant sun? What we are inferring here is that Oumuamua may have been an artificial object, some form of extraterrestrial spacecraft paving a visit to our star system. Such a notion may appear as the purview of ufologists and pseudoscientists, far removed from the skeptical approach of mainstream science. Well, think again, because accredited astronomers didn't rule out the hypothesis and sought evidence to corroborate it or disprove it. In January 2018, a team led by Emilio Enriquez, Department of Astronomy, University of California, Berkeley, published their paper, Breakthrough Listen Observations of One Eye Oumuamua with the GBT. Quoted for the paper, it has long been suggested that advanced extraterrestrial civilizations, should they exist, could conceivably send probes to other stars either for exploration or communication purposes. Interstellar probes would likely be equipped with communication technology that could potentially be operating in the radio band. Therefore, Enriquez and team conducted an observation campaign directed at Oumuamua using the Robert C. Byrd Green Bank Telescope, or GBT. Its goal was to detect if the cigar-shaped object was the source of radio emissions consistent with a technological source. 
The Interstellar Messenger, in fact, presented a unique opportunity to carry out a search for extremely weak transmitters unprecedented in any other SETI experiment. To give you some context, SETI stands for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, a combined effort conducted by institutions such as NASA, the Planetary Society, and the very SETI Institute. The goal, as defined by the Planetary Society, is to answer the question of whether we are alone in the universe. Over two weeks, the Berkeley researchers covered the full rotational phase of Oumuamua using the GBT's four different receivers. Each receiver covered a variety of transmission bands from 1.1 to 11.6 GHz. In particular, the team searched for data related to narrowband 3 Hz resolution, drifting sinusoids over a drift rate range of plus or minus 2 Hz. Such a narrowband emission, if proven, may have indicated the presence of a transmitter located on Oumuamua. The conclusion of the research was, our preliminary results show no narrowband radio emissions from the direction of 1I Oumuamua at any rotational phase. So, had Enriquez and team disproven that the object was indeed a crude or automated vessel dispatched by an alien civilization? Abraham Loeb, chair of the astronomy department at Harvard University, begged to disagree. Writing for Scientific American on September the 27th, 2018, Loeb put forward another hypothesis, the technological relic. According to him, there is a possibility, quote, that we will find technological relics flying through our solar system with no detectable functionality, such as pieces of equipment that lost power over the millions of years of their travel and have turned into space junk. Loeb pointed out that data harvested by the Kepler satellites show that approximately 25% of all observable stars may host a Goldilocks planet similar to Earth. A fraction of these planets may have developed advanced technology like ours. And just like us, these civilizations may have propelled into space a vast array of crafts and probes, which over time have turned into relics, waiting for space archaeologists to go and analyze them. Loeb went on to speculate that the, quote, first artificial relic might have just been discovered over the past year when the Pan Star Sky satellites identified the first interstellar object in the solar system, Oumuamua. The author found it intriguing how the messenger deviated from its expected orbit. This deviation may have been explained by outgassing, but as mentioned earlier, no comma or tail was observed. Might Oumuamua have an artificial engine? Even if it happens to be a piece of natural rock as indicated by its lack of radio transmission, this rock appears to be very unusual by many counts. On November 1, 2018, Abraham Loeb and co-author Shmuel Bali released a new article expanding upon the original relic hypothesis. In this new piece, the authors posited that Oumuamua could be a light sail or a solar sail. Quoting from the paper, Considering an artificial origin, one possibility is a light sail floating in interstellar space as debris from an advanced technological equipment. All right, so what's a light sail? Well, this is a spacecraft which relies on radiation pressure emitted by stars as a means of propulsion. Fantastic, but what's radiation pressure? Well, we rely on the definition from Swinburne University of Technology because it was the only one within our grasp. Radiation pressure can be thought of as the transfer of momentum from photons as they strike the surface of an object. In everyday situations, this pressure is negligible, but in the environs of stars, it can become important given the vast quantities of photons emitted. So it can basically be described as a sort of star wind. Next, we need to clarify if the light sail concept is actually viable. Lobe again. Light sails have been designed and constructed by our own civilization, including the Icarus Project and the Starshot Initiative. The light sail technology might be abundantly used for transportation of cargoes between planets or between stars. Furthermore, the authors suggest that when Oumuamua entered the solar system, it received a boost of sun wind, which could explain its acceleration. Now, there is a caveat here. For radiation pressure to be the cause of acceleration, Oumuamua would have needed to be extremely thin with a tiny mass to area ratio. Loeb and Barley themselves estimated a thickness of 0.3 millimeters and a radius of 20 meters, dimensions which are inconsistent with the data collected by the Very Large Telescope and other observers. As the debate raged on, the enigmatic messenger sped further and further away, making it impossible to conduct further observations. The exact nature of Oumuamua was going to remain a mystery. Well, until March 22nd, 2023, at least. On that date, the journal Nature published the study conducted by assistant professor of chemistry, Jennifer B. Bergner, University of California, Berkeley, and researcher Daryl Z. Seligman, Department of Astronomy at Cornell University. The two authors sought to offer a solution to the enigmatic acceleration experienced by Oumuamua. According to them, our ISO friend started its life as an icy planetesimal. 
Understanding, with the help of Swinburne again, planetesimals are small bodies of rock and or ice that form in the protoplanetary disks of protostellar systems. These small objects continue to merge until finally a planetary system is formed. In our solar system, small asteroids are examples of leftover planetesimals. So, Oumuamua was this big chunk of ice, very similar to a comet. In this model, Oumuamua began as an icy planetesimal that was irradiated at low temperatures by cosmic rays during its interstellar journey and experienced warming during its passage through the solar system. A model developed by the researchers showed that Oumuamua traveled across the Milky Way, absorbing high-energy cosmic rays emitted by supernovas. These rays may have turned roughly one-third of the planetesimal's water ice into hydrogen, and this hydrogen remained trapped within the ice. Now, when comets experience outgassing, they typically release carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. These gases have a relatively high mass, which means that as they are released, they drag a good amount of dust with them. The combination of those gases, plus the dust, is observed as the typical comma or tail left behind by comets. But back to hydrogen now. Hydrogen's mass is lower compared to carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, so when it is released, it does not pull dust along with it. And let's put this together now. When Oumuamua entered our star system, the sun's heat caused the trapped hydrogen to be released. The release of this gas acted as a propellant, favoring the acceleration of our favorite ISO. Moreover, the release of hydrogen did not leave behind an observable tail, as we just explained. In the author's words, we report that the acceleration of Oumuamua is due to the release of entrapped molecular hydrogen that formed through energetic process of an H2O rich ice body. Professor Bergner further commented, we don't need to invoke anything super exotic to explain this behavior. Suddenly, that puzzling speed boost did not appear so in a matter after all. And when you can explain the mysterious acceleration in such a way, there's no need to invoke technological relics, however fascinating and cool that hypothesis might be. We've often referred to in the script as Oumuamua as our favorite ISO or interstellar object, which implies that it's not the only one. In fact, two years after its discovery in August 2019, Amateur astronomer Gennady Borisov and his self-built telescope discovered the second-ever interstellar vagabond, 2I Borisov. And astronomers believe that improved technology will allow us to detect up to seven ISOs passing through our star system every year. But the problem with the Oumuamuas and the Borisovs of the cosmos is that they are not in a fixed orbit around the sun. They whiz through our system before disappearing forever. This rather rude behavior makes it nigh impossible to study them at length, certainly not from our Earth-bound telescopes. Sure, we could try and get closer to them in the future by means of craft such as the Comet Interceptor developed by the European Space Agency. But how about something more specialized? In February, 2024, Alan Stern, principal investigator for NASA's New Horizons mission, published a paper arguing for the development of a purpose-built robotic craft, or IOE, an interstellar object explorer. Stern and his co-authors demonstrated that a flyby conducted by the IOE could be accomplished on a budget of less than a billion dollars, which may be considered relatively modest depending on the balance sheet and priorities of the space agency in charge. A great chunk of that budget would be invested on the payload to be carried to the IOE, a pancreas chromatic visible imager, a color imager, and IR mapping spectrometer, as well as an ultraviolet spectrometer. These instruments will be able to capture data about the geology, color, composition, and rotation of both the interstellar object and its tail. Stern's paper does not delve into the design of the actual IOE craft, but it does specify that it should account for an operational life of 13 years divided in three phases. The first phase is expected to last up to 10 years. This is described as the loiter phase, during which the spacecraft will be dormant, waiting for an object to whiz by. In other words, we have a loiterer waiting for a vagabond. Once the IOE detects an interceptable ISO, the craft will commence its second phase, interception and flyby, which may last up to two years. The paper's authors expect that the encounter with the newly arrived object may take place at a distance of 3.3 astronomical units from Earth. An astronomical unit is equal to the average distance between the Sun and the Earth. That's just short of 150 million kilometers. The third and final phase of the mission is defined as post-flyby data downlink. Over a period of one year, and by using a 34-meter long deep space network antenna, the IOE will transmit the collected data back to Earth. So, a mission of 13 years with a price tag of a billion dollars. Will the results justify such a commitment? Well, yeah, maybe. We tend to agree with Alan Stern's assessment. ISOs represent the leftovers from the formation of planetary systems around other stars. As such, a comprehensive analysis of their composition, geology, and activity will shed light on the processes behind the formation and evolution of planetesimals in other solar systems. A close flyby of an ISO stands as the next logical step in exploring the early history of both our solar system and exoplanetary systems. And so we keenly await the next vagabond to wander in from the void, hoping it will help us unlock the secrets 
lurking beyond the gates of our solar system.